During the match between Real Madrid and Valencia, something terrible happened. While Vinicius Jr. was on the field, some fans in the stadium started chanting racist slurs at him. In response to the racist behaviour, the referee announced over the stadium's loudspeaker. The announcement was directed at the fans, urging them to stop insulting the players and reminding everyone to show respect. The match had to be briefly paused until the announcement was made, emphasising the seriousness of the situation. However, despite the referee's intervention, Vinicius Jr. couldn't control his anger. In the game's 97th minute, he reacted impulsively and ended up slapping Valencia striker Hugo Duro. This action led to Vinicius receiving a red card and he had to leave the game. It was a difficult moment for Vinicius as after the game, on his personal Instagram account, he said that the prize that racist won was his expulsion. This isn't football. This is at La Liga. This incident serves as a clear reminder that we must take a stand against racism. And here's what we can do to end this menace. One way to tackle racism in football is by implementing points deductions, big ones like 10 to 15 points, for teams whose fans engage in racist behaviour. This means that if a team's fans are found guilty of racism, the team could lose points in competitions. For example, in the past, Croatia was fined and received a one-point ban in a Euro 2016 qualifying group because their field had a swastika symbol on it, which is associated with hate, racism and anti-Semitism due to its connection with Nazi Germany. Moreover, strict measures such as stadium bans, games played behind closed doors and closures can be implemented. For instance, after Bulgarian fans displayed racist behaviour towards players like Tyro Mings, Raheem Sterling and Marcus Rashford during a Euro 2020 qualifier against England in October 2019, the national team received a two-match stadium ban and a fine. In their subsequent qualifier against the Czech Republic, Bulgaria played behind closed doors and was also instructed to display a banner with the words no to racism. But now with Vinny's case, these strict measures must be the norm and followed in true letter and spirit. Another effective solution to combat racism in football is to impose lifetime bans on spectators who engage in racist behaviour. Additionally, arrests play a crucial role in addressing racist incidents. While fines and bans are common punishments, arresting those responsible for instigating or participating in racist behaviour can have a significant impact. For example, during the Manchester derby in December 2019, a man was arrested by Greater Manchester Police on suspicion of racially aggravated public order. The arrest was made after Man United midfielder Fred was targeted with objects and racist gestures were directed towards him and Jesse Lingard by Man City fans. Implementing lifetime bans and making arrests send a strong message that racism will not be tolerated in football. On top of that, social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook and Twitter must step up and take strict action against racist accounts. While these platforms have regulation mechanisms in place, more needs to be done to combat racism effectively. Accounts that engage in racist behaviour should be completely blocked, and the dissemination of such hateful content must be banned. Likewise, matches should be abandoned if any player gets racially abused. In the past, there's been a precedent when a match between Paris Saint-Germain and Istanbul's Basaksehir was abandoned due to alleged racial abuse from a match official. The game was called off after both teams walked off the pitch in response to alleged racial abuse directed at Basexahir's assistant coach, Pierre Webo, by the fourth referee, Sebastian Coltescu. Basexahir's players took a stand against racism and refused to continue the match. Following the incident, UEFA suspended Coltescu until the end of the season, emphasising the need to address racial abuse in football. If other measures to combat racism in football are not effective, football authorities should consider circulating pictures of individuals who engage in discriminatory behaviour, publicly shaming them. Exposing those responsible creates accountability and serves as a deterrent, making people think twice before engaging in racist actions. Plus, fostering a culture of inclusivity and diversity within football is crucial. Initiatives such as diversity training, cultural exchange programs and community outreach projects can help bridge divides and promote understanding among players, fans and communities. Media coverage also plays a vital role in shaping public opinion and combating racism. Responsible reporting should condemn and denounce racist incidents while highlighting positive stories of diversity and unity in the game. 
Lastly, fans themselves have a pivotal role to play, creating an inclusive and respectful atmosphere in stadiums, supporting anti-racism campaigns, and reporting instances of discrimination can contribute to a more inclusive football environment. The case of Vinicius Jr. serves as a stark reminder of the persistent issue of racism in football. It is imperative that the football community collectively takes a stand against racism working tirelessly to create a future where all players can compete without fear of racial abuse. Only through unity, education and resolute action can we aspire to rid the beautiful game of this ugly stain and ensure a more inclusive and equitable future for all. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. If you like the video and agree with us, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so that you never miss out on new content. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.